Hello my dear students, I am Abdesh Niranjan and today I am going to deliver a lecture on the topic Niosomes. Niosomes are used as targeted drug delivery systems. So let's get started. Niosomes are non-annex surfactant vesicles. These are unilamellar or multilamellar bilayer vesicles and these are formed upon hydration of non-annex surfactants with or without incorporation of cholesterol. The niosomes are very small and microscopic in size. Their size lies in the nanometric scale. The size of the niosomes lies within the range from 10 to 100 nanometers. Niosomes are a novel drug delivery system in which the medication is encapsulated in a vesicle. Both hydrophilic and lipophilic drugs can be entrapped either in the aqueous layer or in the lipid layer. Now, we will now discuss about the structure of niosomes. These vesicular system are similar to liposomes that can be used as carriers of amphiphilic and lipophilic drugs. It is less toxic and improves the therapeutic index of drug by restricting its action to target cells. Let us now see this structure of niosome. These are the polar head. Actually, surfactant has both the groups in the single moiety or single structure, hydrophilic head and lipophilic tail. This is a monomer unit of surfactant. Each of the surfactant moiety has a polar head and nonpolar tail. Nonpolar tail, it means the hydrocarbon chain and the polar head contains the hydrophilic end. So, this vesicle, niosomal vesicle formed to orient the surfactant moieties in such a manner that is formed in a vehicle shape or vesicular shape. So, this is polar head and this is non-polar tail group. We can now incorporate both kind of drugs in this vesicular system. We can incorpor incorporate hydrophilic drug in this aqueous pocket and lipophilic drugs in the non-polar or lipophilic region. Now, let us discuss what is the basic difference between niosomes and liposomes. Basically, liposomes vesicle made up of a concentric bilayer of phospholipids Whereas, in the case of niosomes, vesicles made up of surfactants with or without incorporation of cholesterol. Liposomal size range from 10 to 3000 nanometers, whereas niosomes size ranges from 10 to 100 nanometers. 
liposomes are comparatively expensive when we compared with neurosomes. Liposomes require special storage conditions, whereas neurosomes there are no such special requirements. In case of liposomes, phospholipids used are unstable, whereas non-annex surfactants in neurosomes are stable enough. Liposomes are comparatively more toxic when we compare with neurosomes. So, here we can see the structure of liposome and neurosome. What are the basic advantages of neosomes? Let us now discuss. Neosomes are osmotically active and stable. They increase the stability of the entrapped drug. The vesicle suspension being water based offers greater patient compliance over oil based systems. Since the structure of the niosome offers place to accommodate hydrophilic, lipophilic as well as amphiphilic drug moieties, they can be used for a variety of drugs. We can encapsulate majority of drugs in the form of niosomes. So niosomes used as a carrier to carry all kind of means most of the drugs to the target cells or target tissues. The vesicles can act as a depot to release the drug slowly and of controlled release. Niosomes are biodegradable, non-immunogenic and biocompatible. Biodegradable means they themselves degrade in the body they are non-immunogenic means they don't provoke any kind of immunogenic or antigenic response. Let us now discuss the disadvantages related to niosomes. The main problem with the niosomes are aggregation. They aggregate to form like a micelle. The another disadvantages of niosomes are fusion. The other problems are with niosomes leaking of entrapped drug, hydrolysis of encapsulated drugs, which limiting the shelf life of the dispersion. Types of niosomes. There are three main types of niosomes multilamellar vesicles, large unilamellar vesicles, and small unilamellar vesicles. We can see these three structures. These are small unilamellar vesicles. These are large unilamellar vesicle and these are multilamellar vesicles. So they vary according to their size. A small unilamellar vesicles having size range from 0 0.025 micrometer to 0 0.05 micrometer large unilamellar vesicles have size range from 0 0.05 micrometer to 
0.08 micrometers. Likewise, multilamellar vesicles having size range up to 0 0.01 micrometer. Let us now discuss about composition of niosomes. There are two major components used for the preparation of niosomes, these are cholesterol and non-anic surfactant. Cholesterol is used to provide rigidity and proper shape confirmation to the niosomes preparation. In non-anic surfactants, the role of surfactants in the formulation of niosomes are generally the main component of niosomes are non-ionic surfactant. So they are used for the preparation of niosomes. Here some of the examples spans and twins both are used as surfactants the non anic surfactants possesses a hydrophilic head and a hydrophobic tail now we are going to discuss method of preparation of niosomes there are various effective methods for the preparation of niosomes the preparation method should be chosen according to the use of niosomes since the preparation methods influence the number of bilayers, size, size distribution and entrapment efficiency of the aqueous phase and the membrane permeability of the vesicles. So very first method of preparation is ether injection method. In ether injection method, we take surfactant and cholesterol and both the ingredient is dissolved in diethyl ether. Then injected in warm water previously maintained at 60 degree centigrade through a 14 gauge needle. Then ether is vaporized to form single layer niosomes. Another method is hand shaking method or this method is also known as thin film hydration technique. In this method we take surfactant, cholesterol, and dissolve in the solvent. In the next step, we remove organic solvent at room temperature. Thin layer formed on the walls of flask. Film can be rehydrated to form multi-lamellar niosomes. Another method is sonication method. In the sonication method, we take drug in a buffer and surfactant and cholesterol in a 10 ml of aqueous phase. Then in the above mixture, we will sonicate for 3 minutes at 60 degree centigrade using titanium probe yielding niosomes. 
another method is multiple membrane extrusion method in this method the mixture of surfactant cholesterol in chloroform is made into thin film by evaporation this film is hydrated with aqueous drug solution and the resultant suspension extruded through polycarbonate membrane it is a good method for controlling niosome size and this is also mostly used method for the preparation of niosome reverse phase evaporation technique in this method we take cholesterol and surfactant dissolved in ether and chloroform this mixture is now sonicated at 50 degree centigrade and again sonicated after adding phosphate buffer saline pbs drug in aqueous phase is added to above mixture and the viscous niosome suspension is diluted with phosphate buffer saline organic phase is removed at 40 degree centigrade at low pressure and heated on a butter bath for 60 degree centigrade for 10 minutes to yield niosomes application of niosomes as we all know niosomes are used as an effective carrier system for the targeted drug delivery so this is used for drug targeting one of the most useful aspect of niosome is their ability to target drugs niosomes can be used to target drugs to the reticulo endothelial system it can be achieved by coating with polymer such as polyethylene glycol niosomes are used in diagnosis niosomes have also been used as carriers for iobutyrol a diagnostic agent used for x-ray imaging these are another applications of niosomes niosomes are also used in the anti neoplastic treatment most anti neoplastic drugs cause severe side effects niosomes can alter the metabolism prolong circulation and half life of the drug thus decreasing the side effects of the drugs niosomes is decreased rate of proliferation of tumor and higher plasma levels accompanied by slower elimination niosomes are also used in leishmaniasis leishmaniasis is a disease in which a parasite of the genus leishmania invades the cells of the liver and spleen use of niosomes in test conducted showed that it was possible to administer high levels of the drug without the triggering of side effects and thus allowed greater efficacy in treatment here some of the other applications of niosomes are these are also used in the delivery of peptide drugs oral peptide drug delivery has long been faced with a challenge of bypassing the enzyme which would break down the peptide use of niosomes to successfully protect the peptide from get gastrointestinal peptide breakdown is being investigated in an in vitro study conducted by oral delivery of a vasopressin derived or derivative entrapped in niosomes showed the entrapment of the drug significantly increased the stability of the peptide niosomes as carriers for hemoglobin niosomes can be used as carriers for hemoglobin within the blood the niosomal vesicle is permeable to oxygen 
and hence can act as a carrier for hemoglobin in anemic patients. So this was all about the niosomes. Thank you for attending my lecture.